Hey, what's up? This is a award show here. Another season means another bunch of interesting sneaker releases. I wasn't actually planning to do a video like this, but I feel like a whole bunch of things have either been recently announced or coming soon or just launched to the point that I feel like it's a pretty decent time to be a sneaker fan. Because it's not just about the latest Dunk colorway, but a bunch of brand new silhouettes, new collaborations, and older things being dragged back from the archives and re-released today in a new form. So no matter your taste or preference, you'll probably find in the new releases something fresh you could see yourself wearing. I've picked out like 15 different options here, all of which are new and I think are interesting or noteworthy in some way. Some of which you might know, some are a bit more underrated or under the radar that maybe you've never seen. Anyway, let's take a look. First off, an update to a classic. We've already looked at a pair of Air Force Ones this year on the channel, but as part of the 40th anniversary celebrations, there is a new collab with Undercover, which looks pretty interesting. It changes both the silhouette and the feature set of the standard version, combining some elements of the ACG Revit Urchi to infuse these with an outdoor fashion vibe, something which is far clearer on this colorway, which directly references the classic ACG shoe. But the upper also uses GTX lining, giving these some genuine all-weather performance as well. We've got three colorways here, all of which are pretty wearable, I think, and in a classic silhouette overall, making these a fairly easy to like shoe. When this video comes out, these will have just dropped, so hopefully they're still available somewhere. I'll put links to as much of this stuff that I can find in the description to try and make that as useful as possible. A cool winter pickup though, and maybe we could do a full review of these if people like them. I have to talk about the A Cold Wall Converse releases and the new Chuck Taylor is no exception. Something I like about this ongoing collaboration is how different each shoe is, it's clear that they've approached every single one with a different theme or an idea in mind. They're using two architects from totally different backgrounds, both to model these and tell their stories about their craft. And I really like this approach using these authentic, interesting figures that maybe aren't so much in the public eye and letting those kinds of stories really shape the product and what it's about, rather than some massive glossy ad campaign with loads of influencers or whatever. These dropped a week or so ago, stock still looks pretty decent on the A Cold Wall official site. And a hundred pounds for this collaboration means it's a fairly affordable entry point into the world of a cold wall. We've got a couple of upcoming ACG models as well. After the success of the Mountain Fly and the Fly Low, there's now a Fly 2 mid. It looks like there's some elements of the low, some of the high, and some new stuff in there as well. Most notably this split outsole giving them a more aggressive boot-like appearance and an updated lacing system seeing them tied around the back of the shoe. These sorts of reverse tying systems can be a bit hit or miss. We've looked at some on the channel before. They don't always work that well, but it does keep the upper looking pretty clean and it allows that semi-concealed ACG branding to shine through. So far we've only seen this kind of bluey purple colorway, but if an all black version comes out, no doubt these will be popular with technical fashion fans. Nike also teased us a while ago by making these super cool ACG boots and then only giving them to Olympians. Sadly, there's been slow progress on my Olympic skateboarding career. but they've turned this into an actual product that people can buy, the ACG Gaia Dome. These are slightly different to the originals, both in colorway and feature set, but it's nice that we're actually getting something like this that's gonna be properly available. There doesn't seem to be much info about these, there's no release date, but it being winter, these being a big ACG boot, I'm hoping we're gonna see these sooner rather than later. There is so much new ACG stuff these days. I feel like the ACG Locate has been kind of overlooked because it's not some tech-infused gore text thing, but they sit in a really nice outdoor fashion, general lifestyle kind of space that feels pretty on trend, but also mega easy to wear. Particularly the white and green colorway is kind of pleasingly retro. If you want a silhouette kind of similar to an Air Force One or a Dunk, but a little bit more outdoor inspired, what with that chunky outsole and the rope lacing, then you could give these a try, particularly as they are one of the more affordable models in the ACG lineup. Margiela sub-brand MM6, which used to be a women's only line until I think this season, I've only just started seeing men's stuff, but at Paris Fashion Week, they announced a new collaboration with Salomon. I thought these were super cool. They've essentially turned, I think it's the XA Alpine, certainly looks like that, into a big pair of tights. Not only are these way higher than a typical sock shoe, but you can really see the delicacy and the lightweight of that material, which makes these look a little bit more elegant than pre 
previous sock shoes, and combining that with a genuine performance model is quite an interesting contrast. Why projects have really increased their profile over the last couple of years, not only have they been consistently making these really strange garments that subtract and divide and multiply different elements of clothing to create these totally new and strange silhouettes, but also some pretty frequent collaborations. Most recently, this boot with DMA, which might look surprisingly conventional given their usual output, but these come with a removable gator-like shroud to turn them into a water-resistant tank. Okay, fine, the shroud isn't actually doing that much, but it does look cool. This isn't the first recent shroud-equipped shoe we've seen, though. We've had some Reebok ones in the past. There's the ISPA Gator as well, which has them built into the back of the shoe. But this is a more robust and luxurious take on that, which I think makes for a better-looking final product, even though the price is pretty hard to stomach. Clearly, it's the season of the shroud-based shoe, though, because we also have the engineered garments and Reebok Zig Kinetica 2.5. The black and brown color palette with the shiny pattern finish is only made more unusual once you attach that shroud. If you've ever felt like your shoe needs a shoe, then here you go. It's maybe a little too far into high performance aesthetics for your average sneakerhead to really get excited about, and that shroud is certainly gonna be overkill for most situations, but I can definitely see engineered garments fans crawling out of the woodwork to quietly pick these up and then rock them in some water impervious fits. There was even a third one that dropped at the start of this month, Asics and Beams teaming up with this Gore-Tex infused model which came with a removable mosquito net. A bit of a different look here because this is more mesh-like and these are super technical looking even with that that shroud removed, you've got this cool uh, contrast red strap going over the top of the upper to see to that. Sadly, I think these were a Japan-only release. They don't seem to be available anymore, so good luck finding a pair of these. There's seemingly an infinite procession of New Balance collabs, and the 2002 R has had so many different colorways at this point that I'm kind of losing interest, but new Joe Fresh Goods and 993 model. I thought these were worth talking about. We've got these tonal colorways that look super cohesive and they have this slightly desaturated quality that almost makes them look hand dyed. And that suede quality is gonna be on point as they're one of the made in USA models. They had a small raffle release in Joe's hometown of Chicago where you had to donate books or art supplies to enter, but it does sound like these are getting a wider release too. So keep a lookout if you like the look of those. For an underrated brand though, Mizuno and the Wave Mujin TL GTX shows why they might be. Cause I think these are a great looking shoe. Great interplay of muted tones with that sharp hit of red at the back, alluding to utilitarian pull tabs on outdoor gear. And they certainly are outdoor ready. They're GTX lined, they've got ripstop paneling, and a super chunky midsole and outsole. If you like Asics, I could definitely see these being up your street. And honestly, I'm pretty tempted to grab a pair of these and try out a brand that I've been increasingly interested in. I actually ended up ordering these. They showed up right before I finished the edit, although unfortunately the retailer sent the wrong size, so I can't try them on. But they do look pretty cool in person as well, so I'm looking forward to getting the right ones. I'll probably put them up on Instagram stories and TikTok, so keep a look out if you want to see some more of this. As an alternative to that, have a look at the Wave Rider 10 as well. They're super retro looking with this really complex paneling, meaning you can get some great looking color combos. I really love this autumnal snow white colorway, for example, but there's a bunch of others you could look at too. There was no way I was gonna do this video without mentioning a brand new Adidas silhouette, a Yu-Gi-Oh collaboration. The Adi 2000 means I can finally bring the Exodia drip to the streets. They come in two colorways. You've got the Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Dark Magician. So you can pick whether you wanna be a Seto Kaiba bootlicker or a Yugi Edgelord. The lateral graphics are quite unusual for a collaboration. It makes these look more like a custom-made piece of sneaker art rather than a mass-produced product, which is pretty interesting, although it's not exactly subtle. It definitely outs you as a weeb stepping out in these, but if you rock up to your local card tournament and someone's got a pair of these on, it's over. You've lost. I feel like the silhouette kind of has teenage girl energy. It looks a bit like a pair of feelers or something to me. So I'm not a massive fan of it, but it does come with a cool box and I like a cool box. A few years ago, there was a Nike and a Cold Wall collaboration which reimagined the Vimero 5. And while these met with a mixed reception on release, increasingly they've been more and more highly regarded. I certainly like mine and they also released a non-collab Vimero 5 at the same time. Those ones quietly came out and sold through and have not really been available since. And I I've been checking on a bunch of places because I wanted to pick up a second pair. Well, Nike finally announced that they are releasing them again. There's gonna be a few different colorways. We've definitely got these two coming out, although there seems to be conflicting reports as to whether there's also gonna be white and black colorways coming too. There's no date on these yet, but I could see these being more popular now than when they released a couple of years ago. It seems like the look of this shoe and trends have kind of aligned a little bit more. They've got that nice blend of retro and sporty that give these an overall really complex and interesting silhouette. 
it. Another fun Converse release is a new version of the Converse Lugged, although these look pretty different to the old ones. These are the 2.0 Counter Climber, essentially a Converse take on a proper boot. They're made of waterproof canvas and they're clearly an all weather friendly model, which comes in black and this quite nice papyrus color as well. To me, they don't look as good as some other options or proper boots, but the price point with the aesthetic you get certainly is tempting. If you're into your more war core stuff where boots like this tend to be pretty popular, I'd certainly be going for these over the off-brand AliExpress stuff that you tend to see floating around. Nike and CDG collabs haven't always been universally praised. I know, can you imagine some people didn't like the Air Force ones with plastic dinosaurs attached? But I think they really nailed it with the Air Max Sunder, a cross-training shoe from 1999 given a fashion-forward reimagining. Although CDG collabs tend to come with a high price tag and this is no exception, these provide something distinctive which feels both on-trend and referential to that original release. Quite different to other popular models as well, so they're a little bit distinctive, and yet come in three highly wearable colorways. Previously, Comme des Garçons collabs have hit the sales. I bought the CDG Moabs at 50% off, for example, so if something similar happens here, then these would genuinely be a really nice choice. Time for a little known up and coming shoe, you probably won't have heard of it, the Nike Dunk. Not gonna say too much about these, obviously, but my favorite new colorway is the Iron Gray and Scream Green. That color pop on the outsole is pretty cool, and I like that they're using textural changes on the upper rather than the typical contrasting colors. Obviously these have been selling pretty quickly, almost anyone can get away with wearing these, and it's a very tasteful colorway as well, so be quick if you like the look of them. I thought these Puma and Nanamika suedes were kind of interesting. Normally anything Gore-Tex is associated with very technical looks, but here it's almost the opposite. That's in keeping with Nanamika's effortlessly functional clothing, but the ultra fluffy suede upper is the main attraction here, so if you want the look of comfy, casual, slightly luxurious menswear with added water resistance, then these are ones to give a try, and it's a relatively uncontested market. There are definitely going to be people who see these and think, ah, oh, that is exactly what I was looking for. And that, if that's you, then definitely let me know in the comments. When you think Takahiro Miyashita, the soloist, you tend to think big, bold text prints when it comes to shoe collaborations, but we've got something pretty different here with this Asics collaboration. A totally left field Chelsea boot design, but with an Asics midsole on the bottom. This is a total clash of two worlds, and yet somehow works surprisingly well. I actually really like these. At the moment, it seems like it's only gonna be a Japanese release, so it might be tricky to get hold of, but it's definitely one you should know about, because I wouldn't be surprised if other brands do something similar in the future, and then you can act all smug because you already know about these ones. While I think of it, these North Face and Paraboot shoes are almost the direct opposite of this collaboration, and again, still kind of work in a weird way, but also slightly cursed, Apparently these aren't even releasing publicly, as if you needed more evidence that these are some kind of weird lab experiment. Kill me, let me die. And with that, I think we're officially sneakered up for FW2223, and there's a bunch of others I didn't even mention. So if I missed anything you think is interesting, then please do add them to the comments. Really hope that we can make that section as valuable as possible for people looking for more sneaker recommendations. And would love to hear if you've picked anything up that you really like as well. If you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, please do give it a like, because it is massively appreciated. I recently ran a vote over on Instagram to see whether you prefer the more conceptual fashion commentary stuff or the more product-based things, and the vote was pretty much 50-50. So I will do my best to keep an even split of both, and in fact some upcoming content is going to be a nice mix of those two worlds, so keep an eye out for that stuff. I'll see you soon. Oh yeah, and remember those Bauman shoes that we talked about back in the summer? They finally released, and they're a thousand euros. Ah, oh, they do look cool though. I'll give them that.